swole Benji here. Today we're going to be talking more about the best possible dungeons in the game that you can run, and I'm going to be showing more math and explaining even more details of what you should run and what you can use if you still don't want to run certain types of dungeons and the best economical way to do it. I have mathed out the weapon tree and the weapons that do the most damage that cost the least amount of silver so you can go out instead of like using a 4.1 or a 4.2 set you can go out and flat 8 for almost the same price just a little bit more expensive not even that much expensive so if you do die it's not really a big deal it's literally like losing one farm plots worth of stuff but before we get into the video I do want to share a donation that I received and yes I know that you're seeing this like eight or nine days late because I film a lot of stuff in advance, but here's the donation. It's not showing up. <laughs> what the heck? Hey, why isn't it? Sh oh, you know what? That's because, uh, there we go. Th now it should show up. $200, dude, from Valenac. Holy crap, man. He says, as always, fantastic work in your videos. I really do appreciate Valenac. Also, as always, fantastic work in your videos. Also, thanks for those Steam games you donated, man. Um, I had a lot of fun with that simulator one. I can't see it on YouTube, of course, but it was a funny game. I do appreciate it, man. Thanks again. You're awesome. You're now the number one donator on the channel. So, <laughs> everyone, big thanks to Valnac. Say big thanks to Valnac in, in the comments, guys. He, he absolutely deserves it with that big Chad donation. All right, so let's get back into the video now. And uh, l let me just kind of explain what I'm going to talk to you today about, okay? So, I went through every type of dungeon in the game. I did it on the live realm, I did it on the test realm. And I mathed out how much fame you get per pressing the ability button. So, let me explain. Like, when I'm in, like, 8-3 bolt casters, right, okay? Uh, I, I deal a ton of damage, and if you've watched the channel at all... You know that the bolt caster's second Q ability, which is this one, where you shoot a rocket, basically you're shooting a giant AoE circle at the ground. This ability has the, one of the highest damage Q abilities in the game. Now, Arcane Staff actually does more damage, <clears throat> but it has a higher cooldown, and it has, like, no Arcane Staff can out DPS, crossbows, ease abilities, and they don't have armor shreds. Alright, so... The, the Q ability on the crossbows, this does more damage than anything else in the game. It has the shortest cooldown, and and it has a passive that lets you shoot the ability twice. When you combine all of this, this makes this the highest damage dealing, fastest clearing, highest DPS weapon in the game for solo dungeons, for group dungeons. I've already covered that in another video. You can go check it out on my channel. Now... Now that we have established that crossbows are the kings of damage in the game, what I have done is I have found out every time you press Q, every single time that you press Q, how much fame are you getting every time you press that? So let me explain, right? Let's say it takes two Q spells to kill a mob, right? Well, you're going to take the total fame and you're going to divide it by two, and then that's how much fame you're getting every time you press Q. Now, here's the argument that a lot of people say that Yellow Zone Tier 5 Dungeons... Yes, it's another one of those videos. This is like the seventh one. Yellow Zone Tier 5 Dungeons, uh, that they don't give enough fame or they don't give enough treasure loot to be worth it. And a lot of people feel like unmasculinated, demasculinated, whatever the word is. They feel soy if, if they're not running like Tier 6s, Tier 7s, Tier 8s. But... When you factor in the amounts of tankiness the mobs have and the amounts of HP the mobs have, then you're, are, you, are you sure that every time you press Q, you're getting the maximum value out of your mobs? Well, that's okay, because I've done the math for you. Let me show you here on the notepad. I, I, I can't really, I mean, I'm sure I can maybe make this bigger, um, but I'm not. So just make sure that the, the video is at full screen. So at 1,844 IP, which is a good quality, uh, uh, bolt casters, let's see if that matches up. I have 1,844. Yes, it does, because I did this on the test realm. As I do all my testing, that's what the test realm is for. All right. So, <laughs> uh, as you can see here, this is the tier 5 flat zones. While faction flagged, 
You should be faction flag, so you're getting faction points. You should have your own guild, so you're getting challenge points. You get a 15% fame increase, right? So the Morgana Knight in the Morgana du Dungeons, they have 1,451 HP. They give 487 fame without an 8-3 satchel. I'm going to get into that later, which means it takes three Q spells to kill them regardless if you have Beef Stew, regardless if you have a Druid Robe maximum stacked, etc. It's still a three-hit kill. So that means every time you press Q, you're going to be getting 162.3 fame every single time. Of course, you know, you don't get it until the mob dies, but, well, you can kill the mob in three Qs, and that's essentially, every time you push the button, that's how much your fame is going to go up. It doesn't sound like much, right? It, it I mean, a single Morgana Knight, it's whatever, but remember, the crossbow is an AoE ability. You can kill multiple mobs at the same time, and so, <laughs> it has the shortest cooldown. But let, let, me, let me continue on. I, I also mapped out the other mobs, like all of these mobs here, they give 156 fame, and they die in one Q spell. And then here you have like the raven, like you can see the raven out of all the Morgana mobs in tier 5 gives the most fame per Q spell at uh, 232. So that's like the big juicy mobs that you want to look for. Uh, now, I, then I, I went to tier 6 red maps and these are maps. You, you go to tier 6 and you pop a map and you go in, the mobs are tankier, your Q spells do actually less damage because the mobs have more armor, uh, they also have more HP. Uh, so I mathed out, out all the damage. And then I mathed it out because, like, I'm not going to take 8.3 in maximum spec to a tier 6 red map. So I, I decided, you know, to do some tests with less IP and then with no IP. Uh, and, and so basically this is like wearing flat 8. Uh, and this is about how much damage you do. Also, you're not going to be using a stew technically in, in those higher tier dungeons because you'll be waiting for your health to regenerate between pulls. So it's really not, it's really not statistically ideal to be using stew. Uh, so, uh, to even be at this power level, you would need max spec and flat 8, and flat 8 bolt casters are like 2 million, 8.3 is 4 million for 300 more item power. So, really, but don't worry, I figured this out later. Uh, this is all part of my testing. Uh, and you can also use like 7.1 or 6.2 to get similar power levels, but they are pretty expensive because it is bolt caster, it is, it is an artifact weapon. Uh, anyway, uh, now, and also in red zones, I only went to zones that gave a 10% a, a fame gain because they're closest to the yellow zone, so you can dip out and put your gear in a chest and go back in, right? Also, if you're in a tier 6 red zone and you pop your map, it's going to send you to even further deeper into the red zone, which even puts you in more danger and enables more travel time. So you should always pop your map right outside the yellow zone and then go into the red zone. But that's not what this video is about. That's pretty common sense. I'm not going to explain that. So, like, in this instance, you can see that a Mor Morgana Cultist gives 771 fame. It takes three shots to kill, and that's 257 fame per Q. And you're like, whoa, Soul Benji, what's, what's going on? Huh? That's more fame per Q than anything uh, up here. That, you, that means red zones were better, right? Uh-uh-uh. That does not mean red zones are better. Okay, let's look at the, the biggest juicy one, the Morgana Footman, which is interesting because it's not the same in Tier 5s. The Morgana Footman is the... It only takes three hits to kill, and it gives the most fame per Q spell, right? 330. That sounds pretty good, right? So, the thing with tier fives, you can wear an 8.3 satchel, and you should be if you care about fame. All right, so let's go, let's just pick a random one. Let's, let's go back to our raven here, all right? And it, it gives 464 fame, 464 fame. And we're going to add 66% of that. So that's 770, and we kill that thing in what, two hits? How many hits is it? Uh, the Morgana Raven? Yeah, it's two shotable, so we're going to divide that by two now. And look at that, it's 385 fame per Q spell, right? Uh, that beats every single thing in the red dungeons. The tier 6 mapped red dungeons, mind you. So when, when someone tells you that tier 6 map dungeons give more fame, they're wrong. Because if you're in a tier 5 zone, you're not risking anything. There's no travel time. There's no risk. There's no stress. There's no worry. And you can wear an 8-3 satchel. I would love to see someone try to wear an 8-3 satchel and do tier 6 maps. Because they're going to be hunted down and killed so fast. Right? They're going to be absolutely hunted down and killed. And... <laughs> You're going to be throwing away millions and millions of silver, but, 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 Swole Benji, you're throwing away millions of silver when you wear the satchel. 
Uh, no, because I'm making most of that back while I complete the dungeon. On average, I will admit, when I'm doing tier 5 yellow zone dungeons, and I have an 8-3 satchel, per hour, I am losing 100,000 silver. Per hour. Alright? To me, 100,000 silver, that's nothing. I've showed off, I've showed off my, my value. Like, I have farms, I have, I have 44 farm plots that I use, I have... Three to four hundred laborers that I use every single day, but I mean, right now I don't have premium active, so I'm not really doing any of that. I'm just kind of chilling, just kind of taking it easy, playing other games. But the point is, is that all of that, all of, all of the laborers, which are filled by journals while I do the dungeons, uh, and I've explained that in other videos, and the farmland, which is just a daily thing, you do that every 22 hours, right? What is that? Like every 12 hours, you get one free, basically. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the point is, is that that makes more than enough silver for me to never be in the red, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> as a new player, you, you won't have an 8-3 satchel, you won't, you won't have, you know, that kind of stuff, so someone could argue that, yeah, the tier 6 zones are better for newer players, and, well, that's freaking false, because you're gonna be taking almost twice as many Q spells to down them, and so your fame per Q spell cast will be lower. So that's what I'm trying to, that's the main focus in today's video. And I'm sorry there's not a lot of action on the screen and a lot of little demos and examples and high editing, but the high editing videos that I make don't get any views for some reason. The ones where I just talk to you and show my data on the screen are some of the most popular on the channel. Alright, so now I did like tier 7 black zones, right? Now here's the thing with black zones, you can't faction flag in a black zone. Uh, but, you can still see that the, the fame is pretty damn good, like the Morgana Crossbowman, it takes four shots, but you could do three Qs with a max stack, or you can do one E spell, and this is done with a flat tier 8 light crossbow, with a mist collar, like, I'm, I gotta show you this, because, uh, I was really surprised, I was mathing out all of the weapons in the game, how much damage they do, and how long it takes for them to kill mobs in all the dungeons, right? And the coolest thing that I found out, all right, is that light crossbows are the cheapest, most, as far as your price cost and your power, the light crossbow is the best in the game. Let, let me let me just show you real quick. I'm just gonna sort by magic uh, magic weapons, tier eight. All right, so you can buy a glacial staff for seventy thousand. Glacial staff, arcane staff. These suck for clearing dungeons, okay? You can argue the Frost Staff is good with the with the Ice Shard, but it's not. You can get on the Test Realm and you can, you can play with this all you want. It actually sucks. And on the Test Realm, the second ability, Horror Frost, it's nerfed. Uh, have fun with your two second cast times and your boss kills, okay? So magic weapons are out. Okay, now you got a melee. Melee weapons. The hammer? I'm sorry, but the hammer is not a, a speed clearing dungeon weapon. And then you have the spear. Okay, so... This is Big Lips McGee, you know, he says that the spear is really good for clearing. It's not bad. It's actually pretty good. So the spear is an option if you want to go the cheap mode and go into the tier 7s or whatever, right? But other than that, it's just spears and hammers. Uh, oh look, there's a glaive. Glaive's not really, you know, the best thing. But then you go to ranged. And look at that. Light, Elder's Light Crossbow, 54,000. It's 54,000 silver. That's pretty damn cheap for a tier 8 that gives you 1,494 item power. And that you could, you compare this with a Mist Collar, you don't even need a, you don't need no tier 8 Mist Collar, just like a 5-1 Mist Collar, right? Uh, hello? Hold on. Yeah, Mist Collar, like, that's 15,000. You, you could do f tier 5 flat for 7,000. Now, whenever you have maximum spec, this is like 13% or 11% or something. It's it's pretty damn good. It, it speeds up your clear. It's very powerful for the cheapness of it, okay? Like, just to compare, like, <laughs> let me let me show you. Like, the big meta weapon that everyone says is the fastest in Corruptions and stuff is a bear paw, right? The bear paw. Bear paw? Two words? Look, look at this, the cheapest possible bear paw is 195,000 at 4.1, only 919 item power? Look at this, these clowns think that this weapon is better. They think that this thing is superior, but look, 195,000, 919 item power, okay? And then you go to fucking crossbows here, you got a ranged, just clear that out. Tier 8, tier 8 light crossbow, 1,494 item power, 54,000. I'm sorry, what? Why are these so cheap? I, I don't know. I, I don't know why they're so cheap. 
but holy craps, like, <laughs> guys, I've already told you at the start of the video that light crossbows, or just crossbows in general, have the strongest Q ability in the game. They have the, the, the fastest mob clearing. They're, they're the meta for hardcore expeditions. And they're the cheapest? Why is the most powerful weapon the cheapest? Why? Why is that? Okay? Like, I'm sitting here using these 8.3 bolt casters that cost 5 million. And I have I do have a, a you know, an 8.3 that costs 1.3 million in the light crossbow. Like, uh, I'll admit, the bolt casters do kill bosses faster than light crossbow. They kill them much faster. Light crossbow clears trash faster. If I'm if I'm gonna go into the black zone, I'm gonna risk fifty thousand, no problem. That's that's chump change. That is that is nothing. And uh like, I'm only losing 300 item power, which is about 120 damage on my Q spells. That's it. Like, eight, tier 8 flat and tier 8.3, it's 120 damage difference on your Q spell. Which, you know, in a tier 5 yellow zone, that's pretty big. Uh, but in a tier 7, you know, that's like maybe one extra cast. One extra cast, that's not bad. Anyway, let's go back to the data. I, I just want to talk about the data now. Remember, you, you can't get faction points in a tier 7 black zone. And you can see here that, um, like, the Morgana Crossbowman gives 326 there. There's a 300... The Morgana Footman, again, the, the big the big Chad of the Tier 7 Black Zones. These are mapped, by the way. Th this is a Tier 7 Black Zone map. Um, the Morgana Footman gives 366 fame per Q cast with a flat 8 light crossbow, 5-1 mist, collar, druid, rope, stalker hood, leather shoes. Uh, you know, just using a cabbage soup. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. This is actually single digits more fame per Q spell than doing tier 5s with an 8-3 satchel. Single digits more. Okay, so if you were to do this a full hour, you're going to get more fame in a tier 7 black zone. Are you happy, Reddit? I said it. I said the word. It's that Bart Simpson meme where they all cheer in the classroom, right? It's single digits. It's single freaking digits. You're going to the tier 7 black zone. You're traveling out there. You're waiting 90 seconds for the portal to close behind you because you're scared of gankers. And and you're gaining single digits more fame per ki per Q cast. Yeah, those single digits add up if you do them thousands of times. Sure they do. Sure they do. You know what else adds up after thousands of times? You dying. You traveling and dying and... Okay, now I'll admit with the flat eight light crossbow, it's only fifty thousand. Whoop de doo! You could do it in four point one armor because you don't need to be tanky. It's a DPS check for the solo dungeons. Okay, but but the big the big stamp of why you shouldn't do this in the tier seven black zones for single digit increases in your fame is that you cannot gain faction points. And faction points will always beat out the jackpots you get in the black zone. They will all, absolutely always beat the jackpots. Okay? Now, I also tested Hunter Corrupted Dungeons, and, and this data this data is really scary. Everyone's like, oh, Hunter Corrupted Dungeons, dude. They're better than the solo dungeons, bro. I'm going to blow that out right now. I'm blowing that out. I'm completely eliminating it. The IP cap is 800 in Hunter Dungeons, so you can't, you just use 4.1 or flat 4 if you're max spec, it's whatever, right? Uh, I'm doing this with 32,000 infamy, which is a 60% gain in Hunter difficulty, uh, and most players, I'm going to tell you right now, the average player, they have, they have over 100,000 infamy, okay? I'm not good at Corrupted Dungeons, I'm getting better, I'm, I've been studying the metas, just so I can get my points up there, just so I can, you know, like, play with the big boys, I guess, throw my money away, just throw your money away, that's two Simpsons memes in one episode, the, the point is, you, you can wear an 8-3 satchel, alright, but here's the thing, L look at the deranged heretic Arbalist, he has 940 HP, but it takes six Q spells, okay, now, I will admit, I'm using... A, a PvP build, which is the bolt casters, the mercenary jacket, guardian helmet, and soldier boots. That is a meta build that will win you like 80% of fights. You'll, you'll lose to Grail Seeker. Uh, if you suck, you'll lose to Black Hands and uh, Hallow Fall and, and the, the Frost Staff. I forget the name right now. I'm not looking it up. I don't care enough. Right? So, you're getting 111 fame per Q spell. That's 
That's three times less than the tier 7 black zone. That's three times less than a tier 5 yellow zone with satchel. Okay. And yeah, you, you, you could satchel this up. You, you could. A 66% increase is going to make this like 170 fame per Q. It's, it's like half as, it's half as good as a tier 5 yellow zone, dude. It's half as good. All right. And it takes you longer to clear. And you lose durability every time you get downed by a meta build. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but the, the, the different option is like, if you're a brand new character and you can only wear 4.1, then it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. There. I said it again, Reddit. I said it again for you. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, I tested stalker corrupted dungeons. Okay. And stalkers got a little better, right? Uh, again, I only have a 38% increase in stalkers because of my low infamy. And like an infernal monstrosity gave 263 on average per Q, Q cast. That was like the best one I could find. Okay, that's that's on par. That's like on par with tier five yellow zone dungeons. Okay, so if you really want to do the PvP thing, you can you can do stalker corrupted. You will die though and lose your your stuff. You you can't you can't use the satchel because you're gonna risk too much. And you can't faction flag in a corrupted dungeon. I'm telling you, you cannot faction flag in that. So what makes it pretty damn? Why would you ever do it? Okay, and then. I, I didn't write down my data too much because I was kind of getting in a hurry here. But uh, tier six Avalonian static solo dungeons. Okay, this is the winner. If dude, good luck ever finding an Avalonian static solo dungeon ever again. There's so many people in private discords that have these mapping tools that map this crap out. Like they just have a guy run around and use a program that automatically does it. It's super bannable, but there's no way that SBI can track it. I, I've been in guilds discords and they use this shit in all of the big ones. It's so unfair for us solo players, man. And no, my Discord will never have such hacks that's against the rules. SBI would love to ban me, and I'm not going to do any kind of shady shit like that so I can get banned. I'm not doing it. I don't recommend you do it. But um, it, essentially, uh, it, it was like 400-something fame per Q cast. It was 100 to 200 more than a yellow zone. 1 to 200 more, so it's like double. It's like being in a tier 10 zone. And this is only a tier 6. Okay, tier 6 Avalonian static solo dungeon. Uh, you know, that means like the, the, the zone is uh, tier 5 or tier 4. It, it can be like 1 or 2 up or below. It, it, Avalonians are weird how they work, but if you ever found a static solo dungeon that's not cleared, dude, those things are packed with people, man. You're, that's the old school experience. You're going to be ganked in there. You're going to be attacked. Every time I go in one, I get attacked. Every time I go in one, I'm killing people inside of them on my alt. Uh, that's, the, that's just to relive the old school experience. But, you know, then you have to get home with the loot. You get a 610% chest bonus, okay? What this means, okay, like right now, we're going to take 610 and we're going to divide it by like 57%. That's the yellow zone bonus. Uh, whoops. Uh, hold on. <laughs> clear. Clear. 610 divided by 57 so you do one tier six static solo dungeon, and it's like you did ten yellow zone dungeons in terms of loot, okay? And uh, <laughs> you you pretty much jackpot every single time if you manage to find one. But I, I did I did multiple tests over the past couple days trying to make Avalonian static solo dungeons like the next thing, like the big boy in game solo dungeon Chad thing, right? On average, I was able to find one dungeon every two hours. It wasn't cleared. One, one dungeon every two hours. I can clear 17 yellow zone dungeons, and I can be faction flagged while I do it per hour on average. I, sometimes more, sometimes less. You know, it really depends. Uh, but you do one tier 6 Avalonian static every two hours, or you do 17 yellows while getting faction points. It's your choice, it's your life, you can play however you want. Alright, well, that's pretty much the video. Uh, hopefully this educated you, okay? This educated you that uh, the value of fame you're getting every time you cast a Q spell, and it can be argued that I, I'm, I'm testing it with maximum spec, I'm testing it with crossbows, I should test it with other weapons, and my counter-argument is that, well, crossbows do the most damage, they have the highest DPS, and if it's the best at max spec, it's the best at least spec. So if I'm comparing a crossbow with no spec to a great axe with no spec, the crossbow will still win, even if the great axe has max spec and the crossbow has max spec. There's no reason to do it. The point is, is that 
to get the most value out of every single action that you take in this game. Tier 5 Yellow Zone Dungeons with compounding allow you to earn the most silver and the most fame per hour. And that's that. I, I don't know how many more times I have to tell you guys this, but what more math can I show you? There's the proof. Anyway, my voice is dying. I'm Soul Bidgey. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. Make sure you return your shopping carts, and I'll see you in the next one.